There was a crazy interesting study the other day about friendship in the Journal of Experimental Social Psychology. The study had people stand at the bottom of a really steep mountain and ask them to estimate how tough they thought it would be to get to the top. Now here's the cool radical thing about what they found. Those people who were standing alone looking up at the mountain gave it a way higher difficulty rating than those who were standing with a friend. Even more fascinating to me was that the longer they had known that friend next to them, the easier they rated the hill. Isn't that a trip? Now, good friends may not make the mountain disappear, but they will make the climb way easier. Friends, true friends, do help turn mountains into those proverbial mole hills. Now, now that study was looking at literal mountains, but I'm kind of extrapolating that to the mountains we face more regularly in our lives. These are the challenges, the things like our relationships, jobs, finances, families, even our own personal growth and development. Do you have the kind of friends that help you climb those kind of mountains? The Bible describes friends in Proverbs like this. It says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity, for the mountain. When I say good friends now, I'm not talking about the one of the 3,205 zillion social media online friends you may have. I'm talking about the real thing. I'm not against Facebook friends at all. I think there are some serious positive benefits of those online social relationships. But when you're face to face with the mountain, it's not who's on your list that counts. It's who's by your side. Ecclesiastes, definitely one of my favorite, most favorite Bible books, says this. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. The word friend and the concept of friendship has changed uh, over the past several years. I'm not saying better or worse, just different. We have Facebook friends, Twitter followers, multiple BFFs. But what it takes to be a true friend hasn't really changed at all. The first characteristic of a true friend is commitment. This is straight up dedication to the relationship. True friends are generally old friends. It takes time to develop trust and time to prove it. It's said that prosperity begets friends, but adversity proves them. The second characteristic of a true friend is truth. (laughs) True friends speak the truth in love. Because they love, they're truthful. If you've never had your friend come up to you and say the hard, true things to you, that's probably not a true friendship yet, because friendships are tested in and by the truth. The third characteristic, love this word, is steadfastness. It's old-fashioned, but it's still a very powerful one. Hold steady under pressure. BFFs, TFFs are people you can trust to be there, not just in the sunshine, but also the storms. You can count on them to be there and be steady when you need them. I read one definition of friend a while back that said a friend is one who comes in when the whole world has gone out. These true friends are hard to find. There's a guy named Howard Hughes, heard of him? He had like a personal net worth of some $4 billion and he said, I'd give it all for just one good friend. We can't make it in this world alone. We need friends, true friends to climb the mountains that face us. Jesus said that greater love uh, has no one than this, than that he lay down his life for his friend. With true friends, we'll not only be able to face the mountains, but overcome them.